Before actually looking at flight, it's worth spending a few moments on identifying birds in flight. The term giz was first used by the RAF in the Second World War and stands for general impressions of size and shape and was used in aeroplane identification. When used by birders, as well as size and shape, it also includes movement and behaviour. With a little practice, it's possible to improve your skills of identifying birds in flight, even when backlit in a bright sky and no colour detail is visible. When looking at shape, look out for key features such as wing shape. The ospreys are very long with fingered ends. The swifts are long, narrow and curved, while the jays are short and broad. Another key feature to look out for is tail shape. Ravens have sharp wedge-shaped ends. Red kites have a deep V-shaped end. And the magpies is very long in proportion to its body. The bill is another thing to look out for. The curlers is very long, thin and downward curving, whereas the shoveler has a distinctive large broad bill. And finally, although fairly obvious, is a long neck. The mute swan flies with it stretched out straight, whereas the grey heron tucks it up and looks like a deep chin. Birds are masters of the air. Each species has evolved and develop different flying skills to suit their individual lifestyles. The peregrine falcon catches its prey on the wing and its aerodynamics have evolved to make it the world's fastest bird. In a stoop it can reach a speed of over 200 miles per hour. The kestrel with its long wings and tail is the master of hovering. It's perfected this skill so well that it can keep hovering with its head perfectly motionless, even in a strong wind, enabling it to locate its prey, small mammals hidden in the undergrowth below. Although competent flyers, for most of the time, a robin's flight is restricted by the boundaries of its territory. Normally it can be seen flying between its favorite singing posts and robustly singing to ward off intruders. And here I managed to catch it when it was busy collecting food for its brood of hungry young ones. The swift with its long side-shaped wings and streamlined body is the ultimate flying machine and spent almost the whole of its life in the air, feeding, sleeping and even mating on the wing and only comes down to terra firma for nesting. With its large broad wings, the buzzard is a master of effortless flight. Here it takes advantage of the lift from the updraft caused by the surrounding hills and ridges. On sunny summer days, it will circle and glide to the top of a thermal and suddenly glide off to find the next one. And by doing this, it can cover many miles with the absolute minimum of effort. What a wonderful life. Members of the tip family rarely fly long distances, but they are extremely acrobatic as they flip through the trees in search of insects. I was lucky enough to photograph this particular blue tit as it managed to catch a floating ball of dog hair in mid-flight. The wren with its short rounded wings is a very sedentary bird rarely seen flying. It spends most of its time searching low down in bushes, roots and rocks for small insects.
This black-headed gull was doing a very good impression of the African skimmer bird as it searched the water's surface for small fish. Lapwings are far from being just another black and white bird. In the right lighting conditions, their wing feathers are a beautiful rainbow of iridescent colours, and to cap it all, they have a magnificent forward curving crest. In winter, they make a magnificent sight as they gather in quite large flocks looking for suitable feeding areas, and their numbers are swollen by migrants from Russia and other East European countries. You can hear their distinctive peewit call that gives them their alternative name. I'm lucky in that every winter I have my very own snarling murmuration to watch. Just before dusk, up to 80 starlings start to gather and circle over the house. I'm always amazed how they can suddenly turn and move in unison without any particular birds seeming to take the lead. Then on one of the passes, a group will suddenly break off and swoop down to roost in the ivy on the rear of the house. And as you can hear, there's a lot of conflict with the resident colony of about 15 pairs of house sparrows who have already taken to the roost about an hour earlier. I'm not the only one who regularly watches this ritual. The local sparrow hall has taken to coming into the garden at this time most days. Goldfinches, another special winter evening sight that they always look forward to seeing. As they circle around in front of the house and birds keep on joining the flock, very aptly known as a charm. They congregate in the tops of trees and bushes, and their chatter encourages more to join them. Then finally they descend into the evergreen trees to roost for the night. Their brilliant colours are best seen in flight, or when the wings are spread in a threat display, showing off their striking broad bands of yellow colour. And finally, a few quick tips on identification. Birds of prey are carnivorous and have different food preferences and the flight pattern and behaviour is adapted to their diet and how they catch their prey. The osprey's main food source is fish, which it catches by part folding its wings and swooping down to take a fish that is close to the surface of the water. The red kite's diet is mainly carrion, which it searches for by soaring and gliding, using its long forked tail as a rudder to steer with. The sparrow hawk's method of hunting its prey, small birds, is by stealth, silently approaching over the garden hedge or fence to surprise any small birds that are there. The kestrel hovers motionless with its tail fanned out as it searches for small mammals. The buzzard has a very Catholic diet, birds, mammals, reptiles and even earthworms and carrion. It glides and hovers almost motionless as it searches for its food. The peregrine is a top hunter and uses its incredible speed to take its prey on the wing. 
The hen harrier can be seen flying quite close to the ground as it searches for small birds. The hirundals are a small group of some of the migrant birds whose diet is insects that it catches on the wing. With their streamlined shape, their flight is fast and very manoeuvrable, making them perfect for catching insects, but not so easy to photograph. The swift is very easy to identify, with its long, narrow, swept back wings, and the swallow by its long, forked tail. To separate the martins, the sand martin has a brown collar, and the house martin is all white on the underside. It also has a white rump, which shows when it's turning or manoeuvring. The raven, the largest of the corvids, often displays its pleasure in flying by soaring, then flipping over and tumbling from the sky. Look out for its wedge-shaped tail and its distinctive cronk-cronk call made in parallel flight. In flight, the rook and the carrion crow are very similar, but the carrion crow has broader wings and slower wing beats. Very large flocks are usually rooks. The magpie's long tail is a giveaway, and like the jay, with its broad, shortish wings, it has fast wing beats interspersed with short glides. The jackdaw, much smaller than the crow and the rock, has more rounded wings and makes a distinctive jack contact call when flying in groups. The jay has short broad wings and its flight appears laboured with its quite fast wing beats. Waders form a large group and as their names suggest spend much of the time on mud flats or in shallow water. Depending on the length of their legs and bills, each species searches for food in slightly different parts of the water's edge. The lapwing and other plovers, with their short bills, search for the mud edges. Sandpipers occupy the shallow mud areas, and the green shank, curling and snipe, with their long bills, probe in the deeper mud areas. The oyster catcher, egress and heron, with their long legs, prefer to stalk the shallow water. With their longish pointed wings, they are all elegant and strong flyers, many migrating quite long distances to their summer breeding grounds. Ducks are broad-billed waterfowl with webbed feet and all are strong and fast flyers. The shell duck, strictly speaking, is not a duck. It belongs to an intermediate group between ducks and geese. Gulls, often called seagulls, are predominantly white, have long pointed wings and powerful deliberate flight. Terns are more slender and have long narrow wings and a forked tail. Their flight is light and it can hover to catch fish, but it also flies further than any other bird, all the way to the Antarctic for the winter. And finally, a quick fly past.
Thank you.